Welcome back to the channel, everybody. You know, when it comes to framing and demolition, choosing the right saw blade can make a world of difference between a job well done and maybe just taking a little bit longer than necessary. Framing blades with their standard 24 tooth design are built to tackle fast paced, high demand work, right? In construction where speed trumps perfection. But what happens when we push these saws to their limits? In our testing, we put seven, seven and a quarter inch framing and demo saw blades through a rigorous series of challenges to see how they stack up in terms of cutting speed, longevity, and resistance to wear. From clean wood tests to nail embedded tests designed, all designed to accelerate blade wear, we dive into the performance of each one of these blades and see which one truly has the best speed to life balance. So whether you're framing a house or tearing through demo work, this video hopefully will help you make an informed decision about which blade delivers the best value for your hard earned dollars. Now, when I talk about speed to life in the video, in this context, I'm referring to the relationship between the saw blade speed measured in surface feet per minute and its blade life. All right, so what blades did we test? We looked at seven 24 tooth framing demo blades. We looked at the Crescent Nail Slicer it's a great blade. The DeWalt Elite Series, it's their newer blade. The tried and true Diablo Demo Demon, awesome blade. The old school Irwin Marathon, it's been around forever. Makita's Max Efficiency Blade. Milwaukee's Nitrous Carbide Blade, brand spanking new, and Spider's Tarantula Blade, great blade. And when we talk about wear on these blades, the speed in which a circular saw blade can cut through material is influenced by several factors. We know this. The blade features stuff like um, width, diameter, tooth count, tooth shape, construction, blade rotational speed, horizontal force applied, and obviously the material you're cutting. So we factored all this in, and we also thought about experienced saw users and how they adjust the saw based on the sound of the blade and the mower. If a star is straining, you slow down. If not, you might speed up, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about our tests. We conducted three primary tests in an additional test for Top, our top performers. The first test was just a clean wood baseline test. Baseline cut in clean wood for time. Just establish that baseline. Then we did a nail embedded test to accelerate blade wear. We did another clean wood test with that used blade. And we used that blade from the nail embedded test and we compared cutting performance from the initial clean wood baseline test to the after the nail embedded test to see how it wore down. And then we did what I call the sawpocalypse test. <laughs> and that was for any of the blades that showed sign of life after our three tests, we ran them through the nail embedded test one more time. So um, in our testing, as always, we try to control variables and we used for this test, we used a Makita 40 volt XGT rear handle seven and a quarter inch circular saw. Runs around 6,400 RPMs. Um, we used fully charged ambient temperature batteries uh, swapping out a, a charged battery for every test. Uh, after each test, the saw was allowed to cool for five minutes and cooled using compressed air through the vent slots. No electronic or battery overload issues or any kind of problems were um, seen during our testing. To produce repeatable saw feed results, we used a Craig AccuCut track system with a drop weight pulley system. It consisted of 11 pounds of horizontal force to pull that saw through the cut. We chose the 11 pound weight because it closely matched our pro users cutting speeds in clean wood. After each test, the sled and track were cleaned of sawdust and lubricated with silicone spray just to keep everything smooth and everything the same. Uh, electro mechanical switches were used and secured at the start and stop to control the rig, the timing. And the time was automatically started as soon as the saw went through into the cut, automatically stopped when it reached the end. Now the timer has an upper limit stop at 100 seconds and we use that as kind of our deadline stop. So our new, our, our baseline cut in clean wood. Like I said, we needed to establish a baseline, right? Otherwise, what are we talking about here? So new blade cutting through 104 inches of clean kill dried two by 10 wood. The timer was recorded and then we used it to compare later after it had gone through our nail embedded test. Now designed for speed, it was wild to see the Makita Max blade crush the competition in the clean wood test. 6.65 seconds. The Makita cut more than twice as fast as the next closest blade, and that was the Diablo Demo Demon, 13.86 seconds. And then the Spider Tarantula was 14.7 seconds. 
The next test we did was our torture test, right? It's our, um, our rapid degradation test. It's a nail embedded cutting test. And this is just a test to accelerate wear and tear. Uh, and it's a challenging 104 inch long nail embedded cut test, 94 nails. The torture test was designed to degrade the saw blade and teeth. We did this on purpose to show wear over time. We used two by 10 lumber, 16 penny nails, pre-drilled, uh, embedded every inch. And like I said, for a total of 94 nails, if a saw was unable to complete the full cut or the allotted 100 seconds that we allowed, or it became a safety concern, we stopped it. We just manually stopped the saw. The number of nails was, uh, and time was recorded. Several blades from uh, each manufacturer were tested in the rig and average times were used. Now, um, we scored our nail embedded test results on nails cut and time cut. So we have two different charts on that, but the Milwaukee Nitrous Blade was a clear standout, cutting through the entire 94 nails in 47 seconds, twice as fast as the rest of the blades. That's an amazing two nails per second. Second place was the Spider Tarantula, Tarantula and it, um, it cut 94 nails in 90 seconds. Makita Max timed out at 100 seconds, but it cut 92 nails, almost made it. Now, from there, we went right back into the clean wood test because we wanted to see now what these saws can do now after they've been degraded. So following the nail embedded test with the used blade, we went through clean wood again. This demonstrated the impact of previous wear that we put in the nail embedded test. The reason for this test is to show speed to life. As pros users, we want to know that our saw blade is still usable after a nail strike, right? The percent increase in time to cut was calculated for each blade. This shows a relative wear on an individual blade after the nail embedded test. Now a lower percentage increase should indicate less destructive wear on the saw blade teeth and indicate a more usable life after a nail strike. This statistic can be a bit skewed or, uh, for, for the slower blades like say Irwin and Crescent. The Milwaukee Nitrous Blade delivered surprisingly great results not only maintaining its cutting speed, but it also slightly improved to 20.37 seconds. This small decrease in time is probably likely to wood variability. The next closest blade was the Diablo Demo Demon with a time of 36.36 seconds. That's an increase of 162% from its baseline test of 13.86 seconds. In third place was the Makita Max with a time of 49.83 seconds, but it, it showed significant blade wear with a 646 increase percentage increase in the baseline time. Now, an, an interesting observation was that both De, uh, DeWalt Elite and the Spider Tarantula blades, they could not complete the wood test. The Spider, however, was the only other blade that we tested that was able to get through 94 nails under 100 seconds. The fact that it couldn't finish the clean wood test just indicates to us that it had reached the end of life span just at the end of that nail embedded test. It had nothing left in the tank. Now we have a fun thing called the SAR Apocalypse Test. Uh, at the end of our initial nail embedded testing, three blades, Diablo, Makita, and Milwaukee, showed some speed to life still left in it. We decided to run these blades through the test a second time, just to push their limits and see what they could do. Now the Milwaukee Nitrous completed the entire test again. It cut 94 nails in 80 seconds. Although its time decreased from 47 seconds in the first run, it was still outperformed all the other blades, their best times in their initial runs. Second place, the Diablo De uh, Demo Demon cut 73 nails in 100 seconds. And then the Makita Max took third, cutting 28 nails before timing out at 100 seconds. In keeping with our normal testing practices, we took these saw blades out into the field. Over several weeks, we tested a variety of the blades, evaluating their performance based on a couple of factors. We looked at the speed of cut, tracking, uh, and speed to life. And what I mean by the speed to life in this situation would be, it's that vibration or feeling, that performance shift in cutting speed or performance of the cut that signals it's time to change the blade. Now, since these blades were primarily used for framing and demo work and remodeling and framing applications, I didn't really, we didn't really focus too much on the quality of cut itself, but rather on the overall performance under typical field conditions framing, pressure treated lumber, uh, two by stuff, uh, remodeling cuts. So here's some of the notable results. The nitrous blade, while cutting through white oak flooring, we're just cutting out some flooring, um, 
the nitrous blade, it, it struck uh, an angled flooring cleat nail. Now, although the blade managed to defeat the nail and kept all of its teeth intact, the subsequent cut following after that was noticeably slower than before the strike. In my experience, these sharp angled hardened steel flooring cleat nails are probably among the most damaging obstacles a saw blade can face. The angle is part of that reason. Uh, I attempted to use a saw blade later for cutting 2x12 PT stringers, and the cut rate was significantly slower than I felt was acceptable, requiring way more feed pressure to basically make the cut, so I replaced it. We did note that the Milwaukee blade had significantly slower feed rate in general compared to a lot of the other blades. It's just a slower cutting uh, blade. Now the Diablo blade cuts fast. For cutting pressure uh, treated wood, for example, stringers executing compound bevel cuts, uh, the Diablo blade was a top performer. It offered excellent cutting speed and really good tracking. In 90 degree cuts, cross cutting, in two by lumber, the Makita blade delivered the fastest cutting speed among all the blades, just crushes it. However, uh, despite the speed, it exhibits kind of mediocre tracking performance on compound bevel, bevel cuts um, in two by lumber. Now the spider blade also cuts fast and performed well cutting framing lumber, PT stringers, and maintaining pretty good uh, tracking in compound bevel cutting as well. Diablo blade, demonstrated strong performance in cutting frame, from framing lumber uh, and PT stringers with solid tracking on compound bevel cuts as well. Both the Crescent and the Irwin blades cut effectively, uh, but were noticeably slower when cutting framing lumber and PT stringers. Additionally, there were some minor tracking issues we observed during some of those compound bevel cutting. Let's talk about price consideration for a minute. So, as with any consumable accessory, price, price is always a factor. You know, you're, you're looking at the price in, in the, on the shelf of the lumber yard. When evaluating saw blades, it's important to remember that all of them are gonna eventually wear a tear and need to be replaced, right? I have several blades in my van because you hit a nail or you destroy a blade or whatever. So on one hand, we have the Milwaukee blade, which performed exceptionally well, but it, it, it comes at 2.5 times higher the price tag than the least expensive blade in our test. So the question is, you know, is it worth the price? Are the higher cost, higher performing blades worth the investment? Or do you, you know, do the more affordable options deliver enough performance for you or justify the lower cost? Um, if you're a remodeler and you're cutting into existing homes, floors, roofs, I'd say the answer is obvious. The nitrous blade is really tough. It's gonna last. For those who are interested in making a purchase, Ohio Power Tool carries many of these blades and, and we're gonna be sure to make sure that we have links down in the video description below for easy access for you guys. My final thoughts on this testing. As a remodeling contractor, investing in longer lasting blades ultimately save both time and money. I don't think anybody can argue that. However, there is an absolute balance between performance and price. And that balance is gonna differ between you and I and you and them and whatever. The Milwaukee Nitrous Blade emerged as the highest performing blade in, our, in terms of durability during our nail embedded test, bar none. However, it's also by far the most expensive option. So let's be real. How many people are gonna hit 94 nails in a single day? I, I, I get that, that's not really gonna happen probably, but this test wasn't about 94 nails in a day. It was designed to accelerate wear and give you an understanding of what the blade can do over time, speed to life, longevity. Now, while Milwaukee might not be the fastest blade in clean wood, it excels in cutting performance over time, especially in tough cutting conditions. In my opinion, most professional users, including myself, will lean towards probably a faster cutting, more affordable blade like the Diablo Demo Demon for standard cutting operations. I'm not gonna change what I normally use, but as a remodeling contractor who cuts through hardwood flooring, south floors, root sheathing materials, all with embedded nails, I am super excited to now have that Milwaukee nitrous blade as an option. It's built to handle these tough challenges and cutting conditions and keep performing, give you that speed to life. For situations like these, I'll definitely have a nitrous blade or two on standby in my van. Swap it out and make those nasty cuts. It's gonna last. Clearly, Milwaukee has made some impressive engineering decisions to create such a juggernaut of a saw blade that can stand up to nail strikes without backing down. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please, get it, if you get a chance, visit Ohio Power Tool. We're going to have links below in the description with most of these blades. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think of this test. 
uh, please, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe, and more importantly, hit the notification bell so you get notified of our videos, and it helps with our, our ranking and, and helps support us. So until next time, guys, take care.